I feel or downhill too fast or too slow Which way is the fastest way to go? The winner takes it all, yes, but why does he win? Well, there's an explanation to nearly everything And you're about to enter the Swedish Winter Sports Research Center kilometers an hour to me that's just an outrageous amount of speed but for the alpine skier it's breakfast and you can talk about fast food there anyway my point is no matter the steepness of the hill no matter how icy the conditions are no matter how high the speed are they always want to improve they always want to go faster and for me that's just awesome but I must admit that I have some problems to see the difference between number one and number ten in a race because that they kind of look all the same to me if you agree I think we have the movie for you we try to go down a little bit deeper to find out the secrets about the alpine skiing take a look at this uh, Swedish Winter Sport Research uh, Center in Östersund is um, primarily uh, perform research in cross country skiing and biathlon but we also perform research in alpine skiing and we have an ongoing cooperation with the University of Ljubljana in Slovenia. And um, we have increased our knowledge in alpine skiing. Uh, our national team uh, has a benefit uh, working uh, nearby uh, our center uh, with discussions with athletes and trainers. And we also can use this knowledge in order to uh, improve or increase our understanding also in cross country skiing, which I think is fantastic. This is Matej Supej from University of Ljubljana, Slovenia. Matej is a world-leading scientist in alpine skiing. Maybe he can take us closer to get the understanding of the differences between number one and number ten. So what we normally observe on World Cup races on the end when the skiers come through the finish line is that the differences uh, between the racers are pretty small, sometimes just a hundred of a second, sometimes the two skiers came with the same time. But uh, when we start analyzing what is going on along the course, we see that in uh, short sections like five or eight uh, second long sections, the differences between the, these same races can be very high. So they can be up to 10%. For example, if you look at the race uh, and you take the first three racers uh, that were, for example, the first three in the first run, and uh, if you compare sections, then you will see that these differences can be, like I said, 5, maybe 10 percent, which is pretty high. So it could be like 30, 100, 50, 100 of a second, so much more that you could see than on the end. Because basically the result on the end is a sum of all these sections. So it is important to add that the winner on the end is normally not a skier that was the fastest in all sections. He is just the fastest in some of them, and in the others he is not so much slower than the others, so then in general he came the first. So if we go a little bit further and we take a look a little bit closer to what is going on, first we can observe that basically skiers can make carved turns or they can make side skidding turns. And uh, both of them are used in World Cup skiing today, so it's not just carving which is present in skiing. So if we start first with carving, which is a bit more popular nowadays, we see that the skis actually carve all, all along the curves. So that means that uh, when skier is skiing between the gates, the skis don't side ski. So they are always on the edges. There is a little bit of uh, snow spraying up in the air. So that's really smooth skiing. So the other technique that uh, we talked about is uh, side skidding or normally more used pivoting. The reason is that uh, the skier actually turns around his skis uh, on the beginning of the turn and side skids. So on the beginning of the turn skiers really side skid a lot and the meaning of that is to decrease the velocity to the range that he can go through the gate. If the velocity would be too high then the skier could make a mistake. So for example on this clip on the same race, on the same gate, uh, Sligeti Miller 
didn't pivot enough, so he didn't side skid enough, so he didn't decrease the velocity enough to the level which would enable him to uh, run the ski smoothly around the gate. So what happened is that around the gate or right after the gate he was side skidding and that is very bad normally in alpine skiing. So it is important to understand that using pivoting technique is not something what is wrong. So the skiers, for example Ted Legity in this case, won this race skiing like that. So finally we can compare carving and pivoting, what is the difference? So when the skier should use either pivoting or either carving, I think this is a very important uh, tactics issue. So for this we have an example of Bode Miller and Reich skiing in the same turn and what happens when the skier is using one technique or the other technique. So if you look at the velocities, so we see that both skiers in the entrance were having almost exactly the same velocity. Then one of the skiers was making a carving turn, that was Bode Miller and he was able to maintain the velocity on the same level as he was having on the, on, the, on the beginning of the turn. So he actually even increased a little bit during the turn, but there on the end it was about the same as on the beginning. On the contrast, Benjamin Reich, he was skiing a pivoting turn. So he had the same entrance velocity as we said, but because he was making this side skidding, so his velocity was decreasing all the way to the gate and then of course after the gate his velocity on, on the end was much lower as it was from Bode Miller. So the difference in velocity on the exit was about 5 km an hour just in one turn. So if we go a step further we can see also the differences in trajectories. So Bode Miller in order to be able to carve he had to start a turn a bit earlier and he was making a more rounded line around the gate. On the other hand, Benjamin Reich, he was going more straight because when you are side skidding, making this pivoting turn, you cannot turn, you are more or less going straight ahead. And then he decreased the velocity and make a sharper turn around the gate. So the difference in the length of the trajectory was more than half a meter in just in one turn. So Bode Miller actually made more than half a meter longer trajectory than Benjamin Reich. But still, on the end of this turn, his time was almost 100 of a second faster as Benjamin Reich. So if you know that you just cannot carve everywhere, then of course you have to make pivoting turns, side skidding, so you have to decrease the velocity. Some of the skiers are even able to alternate carving and pivoting, so they make one carve turn and one pivoting turn, just in, in, in order to be able to carve as much as possible. But on the steeper slopes, we can see that uh, it, is all, it could be equally fast if you use carving turn, uh, pivoting turns instead of carving turns. But when you have a transition to the flat, then it's very critical because, as we saw from the results of the measurements, uh, the, the velocity on the end of a pivoting turn is normally lower as it is in a carving turn, and that's very critical. So that means that, on, especially on the flatter slope, when you, have, when you have less chances to gain the velocity back, it's, it's very good to maintain uh, as much as possible carving turns. Otherwise, you, 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 you lose the velocity and then you cannot gain it back. Okay, my friends, now you know the difference. You know how they do it and you know why they do it. In Sweden, we kind of like to call that two flies in one punch. And if you feel happy right now, you shouldn't thank me. You should thank those guys like Matej Suppe just to bring you the knowledge to enjoy the Olympics even more from your TV couch. Because you know what? If there's another question just pops up your head, you should just click around this page because maybe we have the answer to that special question of yours. But until next time, keep in mind that the answer is just the question away. I feel or downhill too fast or too slow. Which way is the fastest way to go? The winner takes it all, yes, but why does he win? Well, there's an explanation to nearly everything. And you're about to enter the Swedish Winter Sports Research Center.